frontier. Okay, this isn't really my scene. This is definitely Uncle Sam's scene. All right. Because I don't see you as a saloon guy. I'm not a, I'm not a saloon guy. And they actually have real spittoons in this saloon, just so you know. Is it when you walk in, they know you don't belong because they know you're not a saloon guy? But, well, first off, I'm glad you brought that up. A saloon guy can spot a non-saloon guy from a mile away. So, like, okay, you walk in and there's spittoons. I didn't even think that spittoons were legal to use, especially with COVID, because you're just spitting in a spittoon. Right. But they're there. Now, my Uncle Sam is is a he's a saloon guy. I don't know how he became one. I don't know what makes him one, but he's one. You know, I walk and here's the thing on the top of this frontier saloon, there's a 25 foot horse like it's a statue and it's equine. Oh, it's well, it is a beautiful equine, but it's polka dotted. Oh, oh boy. So, so, okay. so it's a polka dotted 25 foot horse on top of a building that is a saloon. Mm, it's a fancy horse. It, it's okay. a very fancy horse. And here's the thing you open the doors to the saloon, and it's really, really dingy. But everybody knows everybody. And then, you right. know, you see people go to the bathroom for a couple minutes and they come back out. Then you see people go buy beer and then they go, you know, out back. And that, so it's like a, it's like a weird, a just weird. A lot of, just a lot of dirty saloon guys. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, Uncle Sam is a lot of things. You know, he could be a pain in the ass. And, you know, he, he yells at me. I mean, I think people are aware of that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think he yells, you know. It's just his nature. It's his, it but, is. It's his nature. There's, but, no, there's no malice towards it. It's no. his nature. No, I don't think it's, it's, it's to be mean. What I do think is that's just who he is. But when I look at him, the one thing I do not see is him being a saloon guy. I look at him. He wears track pants. Track pants. And he wears Eagles t-shirts. And he wears a NASCAR hat. And, you know, nothing about him. You know, it's a, you know, you look at him, you go, there's a 60-year-old guy. You don't look at him and go, there's a saloon guy. Right. Single guy? Totally single, of course. Guy taking you with him? Yep. To a place with a... Spotted horsey. You don't believe. Why don't you go- listen? Why don't you? You know what? Bunch of dirty saloon men that, but only have their mustaches perfectly waxed, they're, and manicured. They are quaffed. And let me te- let me tell you something. Why don't you- Google Frontier Saloon, um, Ridley Township? I want you to, and, and I'm telling you, look at that horse. I want you to look at the picture of that monstrous horse. And I want your I want your initial horse reaction. Okay, because okay. 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 Do you do you see the the horse like with its one hoof and arm? It's down. And it's like, "Hey, come on into the Frontier Saloon." Right, but and, he... then, and and then on the other side of the roof is like a bear. A bear. Yep. Like, bears are invited. Yep, like, bears are invited. So there's bears yeah. on the one side. Then you have a then you have a, a, a flamboyant horsey who's polka-dotted on the roof. And, and it's a very weird place. Are you hearing yourself? <laughs> Think of where your uncle took you. Say it to yourself. I want you to say it out loud. What was on the roof? Uh... A an effeminate horsey polka dotted with his hooves. And what else was on the roof? A bear. Yeah, what was inside? Men with quaffed mustaches. And they went into the bathroom for how long? About about seven minutes. Seven, eight minutes. In pairs. Sounds like you and Uncle Sam have bonded. Well <laughs> unintentionally. Unintentionally, I just thought he wanted to spend time together. You're not on the final frontier yet, my friend. No, no, I'm not. And I don't want to be either. (laughs) Here's the unemployment choo-choo. 
know what, Jeff? Speaking of Uncle Sam and the frontier, because, see, you really got me thinking. And it's like, you know, I don't know what you were trying to insinuate. I don't know if you're trying to say I'm a frontier guy. You know, I don't know what you were trying to say other than, you know, I felt happy that me and Uncle Sam, you know, bonded. And and I was really excited to tell you. And now now you've got me thinking just all these things. I am. I am. Look, I'm not trying to put anything out there or lead you on. I'm just saying that I'm glad that you guys bonded at a bar called Frontier Saloon that has a very effeminate horse and a bear on top and guys that have perfectly waxed mustaches and go into the restroom for seven minutes at a time. You make it sound so naughty. Okay, it's just. Did you have fun? I had a blast. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. And you know what? You know what else? I have a blast. I just have a blast hanging out with Uncle Sam. Period. You know what? He really uh, sounds like a good time. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Even Uncle Sam can make any situation that you know would be boring into a fun situation. I'll give you an example. Uncle Sam can turn a boring, because you know me, I hate text messages. Uncle Sam can turn text messaging into a fun excursion. And, you know, I didn't even realize that, like, this even happened until you brought it up. But apparently Uncle Sam has turned our texting between you and I, which we text about work and the podcast and stuff, into nothing but wrestling. Because he's he's just as, if not a bigger wrestling fan than you are. Uh, you know, and everybody makes the joke. Like, how do you watch that? A bunch of muscled-up, sweaty men in tights uh, grappling all over each other. Um, but, yeah, you, you have become the, you know, the midway point or, like, the guy that relays the messages as we talk professional wrestling back and forth. It comes through you. Well, but and and see, it's hard for me to be a liaison because Jeff, I don't like. I I'll go through our conversation from the other day. I don't understand this wrestling stuff. I don't. I I think it's weird. But uh, somebody died, right? So there was like a famous wrestler who died. What was what? What is the deal with that wrestler that died? Before I get well, first, let me ask you first. Was he really upset about the, this wrestler's passing? I mean, it. He was like he like came in. And he was like, "What's up, man?" You know, and yeah. he says his little catchphrase, and I'm like, "What's wrong, man?" And he's like, "Patty P died." Right, right. Pat Patterson. He was the first ever intercontinental champion. Okay, which is a big belt that the guys quote unquote win. He also uh, was the uh, was groundbreaking that like in his 70s that he came out of the closet uh, and said after all these years. But he passed away. But he he really was a groundbreaker for a lot of things and helped mold the business. And he worked with uh, the WWE for you know over 30 years. So, but he was legitimately devastated. Like he, you know, and and again. You know, when you say, oh, I'm, I'm bummed out about Patty P., I'm thinking, you know, you're talking about one of your friends at the Frontier Saloon. Yeah, uh, you know, you understand. Like, I, you know, it wasn't something that, you know, tore me to pieces here. Uh, you know, I guess it wasn't my time because your Uncle Sam is much older than me. Um, so I don't remember watching Pat Pirates. And what I remember of him is, you know, as he, you're older in the business, they make fun of you a little bit here and there, you know, and he was kind of goofy guy on screen, but... Um, you know, not to bore anybody, but continue. Well, so I'll read some of the text messages. Uh, he said, hey, text Jeff this. And this is what I texted word for word. Yo, dude, is that Sergeant Slaughter? Pat Patterson. Sam wants to know your thoughts. And then you put first inter- intercontinental champion, openly gay. Nice man, I presume. I've always wanted to give him a wedgie. Now, that's you. You wanted to give Pat Patterson a wedgie. Did you ever just look at somebody and just go, you know what, I wonder how they'd react if I pulled his FTLs right up over his head? You know what? It's it's Yes, yes. The guy right. at the frontier with the mustache. Right. So I, he would always be on TV. I would see him. But, I, you know, I said, you know what, this guy, if I just hit him with the wedgemeister one time, give him an atomic, how would he react? And Well, Patty P might whoop your ass, dude. Or like it. That's true. That's true. So then, right after the wedgie discussion, Sam says, text this to Jeff. 
I want to know what you think about Becky Lynch getting knocked up by Seth Rollins. She's pregnant. That's a mess. When's the baby due? From like back in the day, he stays with the storylines and everything to this day. That's unbelievable. Well, okay, is she not pregnant anymore? She no, she no, she's legitimately actually really pregnant. Okay, because 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 then you said they're together. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, they they're they're together in real life, and then and then Sam says, "Well, um, he ruined the career." Do you agree that she ruined her career? Sam thinks he ruined her career. Well, at that time, uh, she was like the big, you know, female star. Like it was her. Ronda Rousey had left uh, after she came in just to go have a baby and a family. So, you know, Becky Lynch became, like, the big headlining for, like, the women wrestlers. And then she was the champion at the time that she announced that she was pregnant, and she had to give up her belt to go have a kid. And well, see, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why do you have to give up your belt to go have a child? That's I see, I think that's bullshit. Because you can't wrestle and be out for, you know, you, the title can't go a year without being defended. Why? You can't wrestle pregnant. Well, first off, if why can't like I, because I think there's a there's a rule in the world of wrestling that if you can if it's more than sixty days that you can't defend your belt that you have to relinquish it. So for injury and things like that, I think every sixty days it has to be defended, and that's in the fake bylaws of professional wrestling. I was gonna say uh, that, 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 that who made that up you. Uh, maybe Pat Patterson. I was well. You, you know, you you did say to Uncle Sam. You know, uh, Sam said that was a beautiful tribute to Pat. Don't you think so? And uh, your response would have been, Pat would have liked them to do it all naked. Pat was a dandy. Right. It was a dandy of a man. And then and then Sam said that's when wrestlers were real men. And you said he's a dandy. Look at him staring down Billy Graham. Well, uh, he was a dandy of a man, and are you telling me that all those big, ripped, muscled men that Pat Patterson wouldn't have liked having that momentous occasion of his death with all those men standing there? Why wouldn't he have liked that? It would have been a great tribute to him. No, it no, it would have been. It's just, you know, here's the thing I don't get about Pat Patterson. I did a little research because I knew we were going to talk about this on the podcast this week. Pat Patterson didn't have a shtick. I'll give you an example. The Undertaker, he had a shtick. He was the death guy. Kane, he had a shtick. He had that weird suit. Mankind, he had his little sock puppet. You know, Stone Cold Steve Austin, he drank a beer and gave you a stunner. You know, The Rock, you could always smell what he was cooking. You know, Pat Patterson, I I, I respect him for being an originator, but what, you know, Ric Flair, he was, woo, you know, Hulk Hogan. He was a Hulkamaniac. He always said, brother. So, I mean, Pat, Pat, Pat was, he was a Pat. He was a Pat. I mean, he just, he was Pat. You know, what, what was his, what was his character? What was his muse? What was his milieu? You know? He was the guy that when everybody was in the locker room, you know, getting ready or after a match, all sweaty. Everybody turned around and said, "It's Pat." It's so, Pat. Here, it's Pat. Here, he's here to look at your dick. It's Pat. It's, it's Pat. It's Pat. Unemployment. Choo choo.